G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I got so much stone from this drill that I think I actually wasted a huge amount. These containers, when I loaded up the game, were completely full of stone. Like, cargo. This one was also full, this one was also full. Well, this one still is. So that was somewhere in the order of three million kilograms of stone. And my two refineries are doing their darndest to keep up with that rate of production, but they are not going to manage it. So I think in order to allow myself to drill out some more of the asteroid without having to waste that stone and just throw it away, I might need to uh, put down a few more refineries. But some of you might have just noticed something else has changed around here, which is that I welded up this whole platform. I had intended to weld up this platform very early on because, as I think I mentioned in the previous episode, the scaffolding makes it very difficult to see what's going on. And as today, my plan is to build a bit of the living area, or at least lay it out so that I can build the parts for it. I kind of need you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> and so welding the floor, I felt was a good way to make sure that it's going to be a lot easier to tell what on earth is happening. So I think I'm going to start off by placing down a few more basic refineries so that I can process all this stone. Let's get rid of that interior light. Energy low. Because I might... We have a look from here. Maybe I'll place them down next to those other ones. Although that doesn't really feed into my whole let's make this place look convoluted and messy. Hmm. Maybe I could leave a bit of a gap. Let's play around a little bit. A few of you are probably thinking, Ah, oh, Splitzy, why did you weld up that whole platform? You're going to be cutting a few holes in it. Yeah, I am. I am going to cut a few holes in it, but the cost of a few holes is probably worth you guys being able to see what, I, what on earth is going on. So I'm happy to pay that price to have the end video be a little bit more discernible. I don't really like that assembler being there. What if I did this? Then come out this way and do another pair of refineries there. So if I put a pipe and a junction so that I could do yet another set and then put a pair of refineries here. Obviously to run that many refineries, I'm going to need to have a lot more power production. So that'll be the next step. And then Hopefully, following straight on from that will be the build more living area step. <laughs> and have somewhere for... Oh, I got access right there. I missed that before. I also realized that I deleted a light that I didn't need to because of how I've arranged these differently to what I'd just done before. Rats. Something else cool that I have started to try to remember how to use is the copy and paste function of build vision. So... I access that light and then I press home it says copying 0 15 and then if I press insert it's going to copy all of them oh it's going to select all of them with insert sorry and then page up for copy Then I can go over to this new light I just built and I can press page down and it instantly goes to the exact same settings whoops did that change the name as well it did Oh, that is something I hope I will get a lot better at remembering because that is going to save me so much time with the lights. Huh. I must have done that deliberately. I just noticed those two are horizontal. That one's vertical and that one's vertical. Same over here. Weird. Not sure I'm okay with that, but it's, uh, it's a thing for now. Right. So how are, how are the batteries going? We are input less than half of what our output is. Okay. And it's going to be even more output once the oxygen farms start being up in operation. I need to expand this solar panel considerably. My goal with these solar panels is to get to the point where I'm producing more power than I'm consuming with those refineries so that I can plug the remora in and start building up its charge. Because it's a little... It's a little sketchy. 
leaving it with just four hours of power, which is what it currently has. And I do expect those refineries to be running all of the time. So it's not like they're going to suddenly get turned off. With the amount of stone I'm going to be mining, they are going to probably run non-stop. Sweet. So we've gone from 6 up to 16 solar panels. Uh, that, I'm suspicious, will be enough to cope with what I've set up. Yeah. Input 1.22, refineries, all drawing power. The assemblers aren't, which is why I've currently got a little bit of an ease on it. Cool. So with enough power, I should probably connect the remora before I do anything else. Make sure I don't run into any problems. And with that in mind, I had planned on attaching it on this row, which would probably be the walls over there, maybe this block. Let's see how that looks from above before I grind the whole thing out. Energy low. Yeah, I think that'll work. Debating between... Oh no, there is no, but no debate. It has to be... There is no option. So conveyor has to go on the floor and connector has to go on top. I was about to say debating between putting the connector in the floor versus above the floor. It has to be above the floor because... The Remora's little winglets at the back are lower than the connector, so it won't be able to hook up. And I think I like it being this way. Okay, and hook up. And locked. Now the Remora should start getting charged, and it's, it's a lot safer having that. But one thing I am going to need to do is figure out how I'm going to build some sort of gantry to get up onto it. Because obviously there is this chance that I will end up with no hydrogen and the need of a way to get on there. I could, I guess, come out from the side. But I, I actually think it'll be more... Uh, it'll leave me more able to build different designs if I'm not... If I do it from the front. Yeah, I'm thinking something simple like this. So, two sets of stairs, and then I'll put a catwalk, catwalk on top, and because of the low gravity, with a remora, I'll easily be able to load up with just a jump. Although it looks a bit strange. So I may, if it ends up being the remora, or if I end up coming here in the same vehicle a lot, add a bit of extra catwalk so that the link looks a little bit tighter. But that works. Oh, speaking of hydrogen, was given a very good idea for what I should do to uh, store some hydrogen down in the other base. And I should probably do a similar thing here. That idea being that I use some of those little cargo storage container things to pop my extra bottles in. I think they are in... yeah. So, might put some of these right beside the door here. And I'll put a little container down in the other base as well. And all my extra ones that the Remora currently has, I will fill up and I will put into these containers. It means that I can't accidentally do anything silly with them. At least not without having previously thought at least a little about it. It's never a guarantee. There's always the possibility for silliness, but at least if I can reduce it, that will help. Started to think whether they're a good way to drop stuff down, but because they're large grid, they're probably not. Still probably better going off with, going with small grid and launching that down, since I'll be able to put the battery as small grid and the parachute and all that sort of thing. Yeah, if I take one hydrogen bottle and three oxygen bottles, that should be good enough. As long as I always refill it when I have to use it. So never leave it. Never kind of go, oh, I'll come back to that later and I'll do it. No, it has to be done straight away. Oh, yep, that's my usual complement of bottles. That'll work. That was a very good idea with that suggestion. Cheap way of building some basic storage on a base. All right, enough of that. Let's get on to doing some <laughs> something more <laughs> than just uh, those little tasks that need to get done. What I would like to do is start designing this bit of the base. I chose to use the sliding doors here because in an airlock 
like this, if I had used the uh, DLC offset doors, I wouldn't have ended up with a shape that I was actually happy with because what I would want to do, if you imagine this block being half as deep as it is, I would want to have something like the half armor blocks against it. And then I'd also want it against this one too. So I can either mismatch, mismatch the doors or do something like this. Which I think with those doors next to it will look a bit weird. So I've decided to go with the full blocks, which means I can go with full blocks of armor. And that'll give me two blocks inside the airlock. And then I've got room above me to pipe in the vent. Because I think the optimal way to do something like this to vent it would be probably a conveyor here. And another conveyor here. And then go with my pipe and pipe. And then I'll cut through to the cut through the floor and the pipe will actually go underneath to all of these tanks. Uh, which I won't grind out until I have connected them to something else. So the wall here is gonna be fairly basic, but I might put a higher up window maybe? Cool. So with that there, I can I think place one light armor slope there. Could put a locker and then a window here. Or I go with a... Oh, hold up. No, better idea. Let's go with a half slab here. Half slab here. And that way I can put some windows in over this side. I need a windows hotbar. So if I put in something like uh, the slope there and there. That'll create enough of a little space here that I feel like it's okay that it kind of works to be used. And if I want to later I can place one of these half slabs with a I don't know like lockers or something like that. Depending on the rest of the layout. So my idea is to create something with armor braces going across. So probably one there and one there. Maybe even a third? Yeah, let's go a third. So they'll go up and they'll go across. The reason I like to do things like this in what is otherwise going to be a glass bubble is that those armor pieces allow you to do block attachments that you would not otherwise be able to do. And I'll show you one of those right now. So if I wanted to have anything right up against the windows, say, oops, say the windows here, I can't have anything up against them if they're on this block. They need to be out here, but round that way. So if I use armor blocks here, it can kind of make sense for me to put something like, oh, I don't know, a corner light here as my attachment point. Because if I put a corner light there, put a double there, and then another single there, I now have an attachment point to allow me to place these flat windows outside, but still remaining airtight. Why don't you let me place you there? What? What? That doesn't make sense. Why doesn't that work? Oh, that's a double light, so it's only got an attachment on one side, right. Did not know that. Huh. At least the other one was down the other end. So these lights will create a reasonable pattern and a nice attachment point. Then I can do stuff like having a pair of these desk corners up against the window, which is a look I love, because who wouldn't want that view out their breakfast window? Awesome. So that's why I needed to, that's why I like to use these bits of armor, because the bits of armor actually allow you to do so much more with your design than you would be able to do if you didn't have them, if you try and make a full glass bubble. Also, it allows you to get more, it allows the, the kind of glass designs to be a bit more simple, and often that equals more effective, as in making sure that they remain airtight. I might just go with... Yeah, single. Let's make this nice and slim. A single 
row up. So this next one's going to be slopey. And then I have to figure out how I'm going to do these windows. And this is where those half slab walls don't necessarily work. Oh! I may have come up with a solution I like. Let's get rid of that. Uh, and we'll get rid of that, and that, and that. Because I'm going to do this a different way. Uh, have I got vent somewhere on here? Probably, but I've lost it, so I'm going to just put it in there again. So, if instead of how I'd done it before, I put an air vent up there, what that allows me to do is place this 2x1x1 two one one base here, which then inside the airlock, you'll have this sloping down roof, but that's fine. The reason it allows me to place that, and it wouldn't have worked properly before, is this air vent would have been vertically oriented. It would have looked funny with that cutting off, and the reason I want that 2x1x1 two one one base where it is, is so that I can then do this and place, nope, that is the wrong type of window, place one of these uh, here with base inverted, there. So that's occupying the space that I might have needed to put something else to keep the airlock airtight. I can then decide if I want to get rid of this half armor block or I think that would be a great spot to put in something decorative like a set of lockers or even I could put in armory lockers over here. I think just regular lockers, maybe just two rows of them there because then that makes some sense why there wouldn't be more walled coming directly above it which looks funny when you use the half slabs. I really hope that, that long-winded explanation made some sense. Because it, I think it's important to think about this stuff when you're designing a space. You don't want to have armor blocks just ending, unless that's the intended look. So I didn't want to have this half armor block ending, but lockers look fine if they just end and then there's wall behind them that's at a different depth. One airlock complete. One, well, pff. one airlock design complete. I'm somewhat tempted to have more of the roof made out of armor so that it's not all glass all the way across. Uh, it means I can put in things like bathrooms and things that should have a bit more privacy than every incoming flight being able to see straight inside. I think what I might do is get rid of those and instead Put some 2x1 bases, so then that makes more sense. So then I can do this, and then half slab, so that'll be kind of the shape of the supports in each spot. Alright, uh, airlock is basically complete, home, insert, page up, page down. But just to check to make sure I haven't messed anything up. Pretty confident that the back of the lockers are airtight, but let's just be certain before I get too excited. Yep, vent shows that this will function. I actually quite like that the locker is there because the detail back on it looks really nice. Having the little high voltage, I think it works quite well as an extra detail inside the airlock. I might try and use those a bit more for their back facing rather than their front facings. And this space here. Looks quite nice as a way to view the gas giant. I hope... Yeah, you'll definitely be able to see it from the other windows as well. But it's going to use quite a lot of silicon to get all these done, but I've now got quite a lot of it, so I don't need to worry so much. Before I start working out the floor plan in there, I'm going to place down a bunch of lights. So I think it's a... Oh, it's not too close, but by the time I'm done with it, it the uh, sun will be below the platform. So I'll need some artificial light. I think, yep, I should be able to place them here too because of the way I lined the roof. Because uh, of the way I did the glass, I've left that in that lower block clear, which was intentional so that I had room for lights. Now, as I am want to do recently, just that little bit of yellow to the light, a little bit of a radius increase. 
let's just go to nine, eight point five for now, and then same thing. Home, insert, page up, copy, page down, page down. Oh my gosh, this is so much faster. I love it. Page down. I'm so glad I did that tutorial <laughs> on how to on like uh, beginner mods because it's very unlikely I would have looked at Build Vision's workshop page had I not done that. And that's the reason I know about those controls. And I'm going to use them so much. Sweet. So now I've got a little bit of an industrial feeling, but yet quite open base here. Industrial because it's using all of the battered armor, which may change. But for now, I quite like the look here. So what do I need inside this space? I want to have a breakfast area. I want to have all of that sort of niceness. And I want to do that stuff probably first before I get, like, I want to place all that stuff out. Even if I don't weld it now, I want to place it out so that then once I make this airtight, I'm not grinding away at anything and risking venting all of the oxygen that's in here. Because there's going to be a lot of oxygen keeping this space pressurized. And if I end up needing to move a vent, I'm going to potentially stuff it up and lose a lot of oxygen, which I would rather avoid. It'd be nice to have a seat on the base as well, <laughs> just so I don't have to keep charging from the remora. Oh no. Dang it. Didn't think the lighting in here through. I might get rid of one of these pairs of lights. Probably this one. Uh, in fact, oh no, I shouldn't do that just yet. But I, I will probably get rid of this because I need to put a sensor in here to control this vent. So the vent will turn itself on and start depressurizing this airlock anytime I walk in. Let's think about beds first. Do I want to have the beds on the outside? I don't really think I need to. I kind of like the idea of this all being quite open. And I'm going to make this the sort of space that would be for a crew of maybe four? Two to four? Should work. So if I put a bed there, then I'm just going to put catwalks on this as well. Uh, so then it'll be either. Do I want to use grated catwalks? Yeah, I think I want to use grated catwalks. So a grated catwalk. Uh, this shouldn't need to be open. It's a grated catwalk along here with stairs then oh this is great that leaves me heaps more room to play with stuff so then i can put in an armory the one with the floor another bed some of these beds will have windows that can see out some won't but that's okay then i can put a toilet the one with yeah bathroom the one that kind of looks like it has a door even though it doesn't have a door and then Oh yeah, that'll work. Then what I can do is put another bed. So we'll just have three beds. Then, just for something a little bit different. Pop in a light armor slope there. Yeah, that could work. So we've got three beds above. Leaving me plenty of space for like... I was thinking something that looked a little bit like a workshop maybe. Although they probably wouldn't want to work inside their one pressurized area for too much. Like anything... Potentially explosive certainly wouldn't want to be worked on in here. I'll need some supports underneath this, so I'm thinking line armor slope, block, and then what I can do is I can put my bathroom in here. Yes, uh, like a shower bathroom. I know this seems like a lot of water for a space station, but oh well. Uh, and then I can put a second, then I can put a bathroom door in here. I think for this one I might actually use the offset door. I like. The idea that a bathroom door wouldn't have a window. So I normally try and use, I don't ideally try and use these ones, but I often end up using sliding doors because they occupy a fuel, full block. Oh no, I'm going to go to the sliding door, aren't I? Yep. Offset door, no, because I need to have this open. So then I've got the ability to place stuff, other stuff under here. And then I should have a support down this end. I'll do with an interior wall. Then I might use either glass above here 
or catwalk above. The opaque catwalk, not the grated one, obviously. Because they need it to be airtight. Cool. Uh, I might weld this stage up again and then move on to the rest of it. I'm quite excited about this. This is looking more comfortable than anything I've built down on the planet. Huh. <laughs> this is survival baby all over again where I built a really uncomfortable uh, secret volcano base and that was the first toilet I built in the whole series <sighs> I did eventually get comfortable on the main base though oh all the stone's gone so what I need to do with this is bring it back angle it a little bit downward so that will be using this rotor, which I'm going to max the torque on, and then drill back in again and kind of broaden this hole. I was about to say this whole hole. Broaden the hole. Okay, it is slowly tilting some way. Oh yeah, the head's going down. Yep, cool. Uh, what angle should I stop at? Don't want to go super far. Yeah, I'll stop at 10 degrees. Probably going to have to drill some more of this by hand to make sure that I can spin round. But my idea with the drilling at the moment is to kind of carve out a bigger area where this drill starts and just slowly carve more and more of it. So then once I've got enough clearance around, I can expand this and... That expansion I won't have to do any ma any manual clearances for. So, drills on. I really should have a button to turn this on and off. Because its velocity always stays the same. Except for when I'm doing this clearing, which... Hey. Not good. Let's see, did a bad. I have a feeling that's just tilted the whole thing upward. Yep, that's exactly what's happened. Urgh, why did I do that? It should have been slower so it could have worked. Let's see if that's safe speed. Nope, that's too fast. Too fast, too fast, too fast. Yeah, that sort of shaking happens so quickly. Uh, quite a few people have asked recently why I didn't have just one arm of drills coming off one side. One, that shaking is the sort of thing that's going to be worse if the drill head, ro if, like if this rotor is off-centered. Also the rotor won't work as effectively because it won't be, it may not be able to move such a great mass. But the real reason is, if I want to drill at any decent rate, I need more drills in this drill head. As in if I want to push the pistons forward at any decent rate. Uh, I need to clear that stone, otherwise it starts catching and starts the thing shaking and it's all kinds of scary. We are slowly moving forward now. Seems to be mostly at a safe, way, safe pace. I'm going to be tempted in the future to put two more arms on this. So drills going up and down in the current orientation. Because I think with the four, I'll be able to drill out a bit more quickly. So from that massive amount of stone and the little bit of iron that I'd collected before, I still only got 80,000 iron ingots. So... <laughs> it just goes to show I managed to nerf the stone yield enough to make it basically pointless to build stone mines unless you were absolutely desperate which is kind of what I intended to do there we go I have a way to recharge on the station now well that's going to be a nice view sucks to be uh, this person <laughs> that not so much of a nice view Probably could have rearranged these. Ah, oh, yeah, I could have moved them all down once. So I could have gone armory, bed. No, I couldn't. That one. Oh, no, there's no way I could have done this to make it work unless I put the bed on the end and then put a catwalk on the end as a cap, which I could have done, I guess. But I think the vent is going to be in that spot, so. Nope. Cool. Glad it didn't work any better than I did it. Or wouldn't have worked any better than I did it. Here we go, let's recharge. Oh, my to- <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I was gonna recharge on the toilet. My O2's run low. Don't want to run out of air. Well, the living space is kind of coming together, I think. 
hopefully I'll be able to get it finished and then get the oxygen farms a few of them complete and piped up to these tanks so I can start filling the tanks I'm not gonna be able to pressurize the living area for some time yet I think it's gonna be a little too expensive that's the light without the uh, sun yep no sunlight that's just the artificial light and I think this has worked out quite well. The lighting does look a little bit odd on this side of stuff, so maybe I will try and get one light on the back wall here just to shine in here. But with the lights on the, like those lights behind it, the bathroom looks mostly right. Like these don't look too bad. The light that's bleeding through a solid object. I might go grab some girders and start placing them down. So I'll need, should make a bunch of that. Basic assembler, why don't you make a bunch of that? I did have the basic assembler on co-op mode with the main assembler, but it kept taking items and being too slow to produce it, so it ended up being really awkward and started to annoy me. So I changed it. Oh, accumulating massive piles of stone again. This is good for now. I think I will go with glass above this area. Just try and introduce a decent amount of natural light in when the sun's up. And I think what I will also do, just to continue the pattern more than anything, is I'm going to put the flat windows on top of these pieces. So there and there. It'll also secure the roof a bit more firmly, uh, as it's going to have more attachment points this way. And then I continue out here, because otherwise it was just going to be attached to those lights. And that's functional, but always a little bit risky uh, how easy it is to grind them out and get rid of the whole roof in one go. Whoops. Get back here. <sighs> Who knows what that might land on? Oh, I need oxygen. I may find I've left these lights too intense because it is getting kind of bright inside. In a flat, sort of uninteresting way. A problem that I'm sure many of you have run into before is that my assemblers keep getting full of gravel. Because I'm processing so much, I just keep running into this issue where production stops because I have filled the thing with gravel. And that's kind of annoying and something I'd like to fix. My usual way of fixing it is just eject the gravel, ditch it, be done with it, don't have any gravel. And while that is something I'm going to do, my plan for the ejector was actually to have it underneath the main bit of the base so it just drops clear of the asteroid. I could attach one over there by the drill and that would work just fine. But to do something different and to see if a different technique would work in a situation where you want to use gravel for something else, I am going to attempt to use sorters to stop the assembler from having lots and lots and lots of gravel ending up in it. The basic assembler I can't do anything about because it's attached to the refineries, but at least this assembler I could. So, first up, what I'm going to do is create an alternate connection here. Okay, and then get rid of this pipe. And where that pipe was, I will need to place down a conveyor sorter. And the first sorter I think I'll place is the one going to the assembler. Absolutely 100% doing this just for the fun of it. This is not the efficient way of doing things. Uh, but if you've got any ideas of how I could improve this system if it doesn't work, let me know. Uh, so conveyor sorter going to it. This one will have a blacklist for gravel. And then what I need to do is complete the loop with pipe on there. And another sorter. And that one's going in, and then this one coming out and joining the rest of the system. And the one coming out doesn't need to have any whitelist, blacklist, anything on it. It'll just allow for free movement. None of these will be set to pull or push or anything like that. Get rid of that. And then I can put a tube in here. In theory, this system should work. Because the gravel can't get into the assembler, and the assembler can grab everything else, and then everything from the assembler can get out. So if you have any reason to hold on to gravel for something or other, then 
this would certainly be a valid approach to how you could isolate your assemblers. Or isolate any block from any particular item that you want it isolated from. Uh, right. My cargo containers are almost full. I am going to stop the drills. I think I've gotten that pretty close to bang on what I wanted for the iron. Maybe a couple of degrees up and a couple of degrees to the left. That was the sort of thing I was planning on doing with this drill, was clearing out huge swathes of the rock so that then I could punch through and get all of the iron ore in the deposit that's closest. Hoping to get a few hundred thousand iron ingots up here. I'm so doing this in the wrong order. Oh, I know I'm so doing it in the wrong order. I should have had the oxygen farms built first and then built this second, but... Ah, well. <laughs> it is what it is. Welding up these windows from the outside, I feel like the window cleaner with the most dangerous job in the world. Because all that is below me. Just a couple more windows to go. Well, this space kind of feels cool with the window over there. I quite like it. Uh, I should check and make sure that this is in fact airtight. <sighs> no. Did I miss a window? I wonder if it's one of these blocks, like the beds on top or something like that, that isn't completely airtight. And then I might need to put down some extra bits of stuff to make it airtight on the inside. Like whether I'm going to need to replace this side one with a full block. I might start with it because it seems a culprit and I don't really like the look that I've got with it being piece like that. So I'll see Energy whether low. replacing it with a full window is going to fix my problem. Still not airtight. Because it will go green as soon as this is airtight. And the vents themselves are airtight. You don't need to worry about that gap there. Uh, I don't... I'm pretty confident that the way these windows are done is fine. Hmm. I might well end up using build info to figure this one out. Because uh, of Steve being in the middle of a time lapse, I don't want to do a reload to add the mod right now. As that will kind of stuff up the whole time lapse. So I might just put in two more windows, see if they fix it, and then give up. <laughs> For now. Till next time. One there, and one there. It's airtight now. It was these blocks. So the top of the armory and the top... Yeah, the top of the armory is not airtight. Fascinating. Cool, we're airtight. Awesome. Or at least the top of it isn't airtight enough for a block on top and off to the side to be airtight to it. Anyway, it's airtight now. That's perfect. That means I can get on to the functional bit of starting to accumulate some oxygen here. So... Let's go underneath. Get rid of the blocks that I need to get rid of. Just that one. And all four of these. And I might bring that along to another junction here. Branch off. I kind of like the idea of this. Kind of branching off a central line of conveyors. Gives a nice consistent aesthetic around the place too. Something like that. So then all the tanks would be piped once I've welded all that up. And that ca the cargo container up there will be piped up to at least the oxygen system. But not yet the rest of the system. Uh, and I'm going to be really careful with my hydrogen around here. I'm making so much progress on the base today. This is amazing. Getting all that stone mined last time made a big difference. First oxygen farm complete. I will hopefully have enough to build all eight of these and then build an oxygen tank. I intend to kind of use these as a bit of a test bed to get an eye, a clearer idea of how many of them I'm going to need to make this sustainable in the long term. So I would like to know how much oxygen, I, how many oxygen farms it takes to keep me alive just on oxygen farms. I suspect it's going to be more than is practical for most purposes where I might consider them, but it would be nice to know in case there is a planet around here that I want to Energy reside on that, low. like, up here has no source of ice. 
because it would be somewhat reassuring to have a an infinitely renewable source of oxygen. Though, equally, kind of cool to have to go and shuttle oxygen from somewhere else. But with the size of tanks as they are and the amount of oxygen that even with my crazy increased amounts that are used up by the engineer, I just don't feel like using tanks creates all that interesting... all that many interesting elements of gameplay. Because I can just probably get by on a single large grid tank for a very, 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 very impractically long time. <laughs> I, even with my long-term play in a single scenario like I have, I'm still not likely to run into too many problems, so I kind of... Well, at least without depressurization events and that sort of stuff. So I'd, l I'd like to use the... I'd like to use the farms anyway, as impractical as that is. Alrighty, we have an oxygen tank. Let's have a look. It is... <laughs> How slowly is it going to produce... Oh, going to accumulate oxygen. Um, oh! Uh, that's a problem. Now you should be set to depressurize so that I can go turn off the one inside without wasting any oxygen because I reckon, yep, it was set to on. Room pressure got up to 7%. Uh, what are you saying the room pressure is now? Zero. Okay, toggle you off. Now what's in the tank? Hmm. That's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's, that's about... I'm I'm estimating here because I think when actually if I hop in the remora we can compare. So if I'm in here and we go to the tank, remora oxygen tank. So that's slightly faster than one liter per second, I think. And then if we look at the oxygen tank on the base, it's going up maybe one liter every second and a half so maybe it's like 16 or 20 ish oxygen farms that's that's actually a lot more achievable than i thought it was going to be uh how much do the farms use up uh 20 kilowatts well, that's not as much as i thought either 3.54 liters per minute that's a lot better than what i remember getting maybe i was not even remotely optimized when I was uh, last playing around with oxygen farms. Hmm. Next question. Will it look silly if I further expand this solar panels out by another row? Here we go. Oh. Uh, well, before I do that, <laughs> might want to make it so that it actually fills up, but I, what I thought I'd try is Get my first space oxygen. Uh, TTT. What a refill. Yay! Hey, hey. <laughs> Fresh from the farm. Nice. I'm going to pop these out here, and if they look too big when I'm looking in the time lapses, then I might reevaluate them, but I think. Considering it's a flimsy solar array, it can be quite large without it looking ridiculous. All right, solar panels drastically expanded. Remora is getting charged. We're getting oxygen into the tank or tanks, albeit very slowly. We've got 94 liters in that one. We got 72 probably in all three of these. I oh, know it'll be a little bit less in each because I built them sequentially. Yeah. We've got a few hundred litres of oxygen up here already. That'll continue to accumulate. This is pressurizable, but I would like to accumulate a bit more oxygen before I try. And I'll probably do some upgrades on this airlock before I do that, like putting a sensor in. But for the remainder of this episode, what I would like to do is do another drop. I would like to drop this time something that hopefully won't get destroyed <laughs> by a drone as it lands, but also a few people did point out something that I don't think it had a meaningful impact, but I'll do it correctly this time anyway. 
when I pushed the battery and the beacon off the side, it would have had some lateral velocity. It shouldn't have made a big impact, but I'll still try and do things pretty much correctly this time. And the way I think I'm going to do that is by building a little rotor on the underside here and just do a dead drop off that. And this time I'm going to put a gyroscope on my little vehicle so that I can control my camera and keep it a bit more stable. Uh, I don't have anywhere special in mind for this. I just need to make sure it's clear of the asteroid. So this will do. I'm not going to weld it up at all. Because I haven't yet thought about how I'm going to build a launcher. But I am going to build some sort of launching device to try and get this as close to my base as possible. So it'll have to have the correct angle and the correct velocity so that I can drop it and like ideally land within a few hundred meters. That would be amazing. Uh, so, battery. I feel like I should have a hot bar with most of the stuff I needed from last time. Parachute. Antenna. Battery. Second parachute. Camera. Remote control. And gyro. Alright, just grab those last power cells and then I can drop it and see what happens. If I take control of this remote, which is drop test, and I increase the range of this before I forget. Oh, I haven't put any parachutes in. Jeez. Getting way ahead of myself here. Auto deploy on. Auto deploy on. So. What I'm thinking of doing is seeing if I can sit in the remora, get into control of that remote control, detach that rotor while in control of the remote so that I can see from the camera's perspective the whole way down. But I think I'm going to get disconnected as the grids switch from being part of the base to not being part of the base. Camera, drop test, view. I thought I was rotated for a second there. <laughs> okay, okay. Remote, control, drop test, control, okay, uh, rotor, drop, incomplete, detach, oh, I do stay in view, awesome, down we go, <laughs> hey, oh, I can make this a bit more interesting, let's watch where we're going. I really wasn't expecting that to actually link up and work then. I thought I would lose my dis lose my connection as I dropped the rotor off. I'm glad that worked. There go my shoots. That just there oh, looks distinctly like the nickel mine. I am not too far from it. Also, I can't really fight the parachutes. They have pulled me in a direction that I did not want to go. So, how far am I from the main base? Oh, I'm 3.2 kilometers. This has ended up just barely inside the kind of snowy plateau that I'm on which is to be honest not a bad spot to start and it's not a bad place to start being right near the nickel mine you can see my shadow over there I'm gonna land on this rocky rough patch which is obviously very much not ideal uh, I would uh, I need to make sure that wherever I land is on some relatively flat ground because that will make retrieval far simpler but this is, this is actually kind of good. And no cargo ships to destroy me in sight. Which is also good. See how well this rests. If it rests nicely, then I'll just make a GPS as it rests. But uh, slash GPS, oops, GPS. First drop landing. I'm going to hit that just as I hit the ground because I'm going to bounce down, I think. 
This will give me the most accurate reading. There we go. Uh, there's a bounce down the hill. <laughs> I would call that a very successful test. <laughs> Just a nice change from last time. Okay. How long are you going to rock and roll around for? There we go. Awesome. Let's go back to the asteroid. Well, next time I need to hopefully have come up with some idea of a basic launch vehicle. So I need to design the vehicle first, then I'll be able to design the way that it gets printed. Then I'll be able to design how to launch the thing from the printer. Because there's going to have to be those steps. So basically what I need to have is a small grid, large cargo container, a connector, a merge block, because it's going to need to be projected so it needs to be connected and piped. I'll need to have a sorter probably on the base side of stuff to push stuff into the cargo container so it gets full before it gets launched. I'm going to need... Uh, what else will I need on it? Battery, beacon, parachutes. That should be everything for it, I think. Hopefully that'll be able to be easily small enough that I should be able to uh, set up some large grid welders to weld that up without any troubles whatsoever. So that'll be the start. Uh, probably some more mining next time and uh, maybe expanding this thing out since I've managed to dig pretty much directly towards the iron mine this time. But I think I'm going to keep drilling such large amounts, I'm going to need more cargo sta storage so that I can drill lots at once, or I'm going to need more refineries. But, I'm going to focus on this delivery mechanism next time, and maybe a few little upgrades to the living quarters. So there's all that, and plenty more to come, and I will see you then.